Hi friends, today we will learn thyroiditis. So what is thyroiditis? It is nothing but inflammation of your thyroid gland. A 30 year old lady came to the OP department with throat pain and fever of one week duration. On examination, she was febrile and her heart rate was 124 per minute and she was having a tender thyroid swelling or the anterior aspect of neck and she is having fine tremor of hands. Her total count was 12,000 and her ESR was raised to 90 and her TSH was not detectable, it was less than 0 0.01. What is the most probable diagnosis and how will you evaluate her further? So, you have got a patient with uh, anterior neck pain or thyroid pain. What are the common causes of thyroid pain? So, I have mentioned few causes here. This acute and subacute denotes thyroiditis. It's either acute thyroiditis or subacute thyroiditis, of which the more common one is a subacute thyroiditis. The other causes are a, suppose the patient is having a hemorrhage cyst. A hemorrhage into that cyst can produce thyroid pain. Other one is a thyroid patient developing sudden onset of pain. Always think about possible malignant transformation. Keeping these possibilities in mind, now we will go to the classification of thyroiditis. Thyroiditis, you can simply classify it into acute thyroiditis subacute thyroiditis and chronic thyroiditis. If you are dealing with an acute onset of pain and tenderness over the thyroid gland, always think about possibility of a bacterial infection, always think about possibility of a fungal infection or in selected cases you can think about a radiation thyroiditis which is obvious from the history. If you go to the subacute causes, the most common one is a viral thyroiditis which is otherwise called as decurvans thyroiditis. Other causes are painless thyroiditis which is usually seen in postpartum females otherwise called as postpartum thyroiditis and other one is certain drugs which can produce subacute onset of thyroiditis. If you go to the chronic thyroiditis these two are the common causes Hashimoto's thyroiditis and Riddell's thyroiditis. Remember Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the most common cause of thyroiditis all over the world and it is the most common cause of hypothyroidism also. Now we will see what is acute thyroiditis. Acute thyroiditis is acute inflammation of your thyroid gland either due to a bacterial or fungal etiology and it usually happens in people with uh, predisposing features like in children persistence of fourth branchial pouch uh, leading to uh, opening near the piriform sinus or in elderly presence of a long-standing goiter or a degeneration in thyroid malignancy these are the predisposing factors how will they present they will present with sudden onset pain and tenderness over the thyroid gland or anterior neck pain which can radiate to your jaw and ear this can be associated with systemic features like fever arthralgias and myalgias so how will you investigate first you go for the routine investigations your total count will be elevated your ESR will be elevated in acute thyroiditis but if you go for TFT your TFT will be usually normal in acute thyroiditis if you want to investigate further you can proceed with fine needle aspiration cytology and suppose your patient has developed a abscess and you can drain and do a culture and sensitivity of the pus and treatment suppose you are dealing with a bacterial thyroiditis always start antibiotics along with the NSAIDs for pain and suppose your patient is having an abscess you can drain that proceed with surgery okay what happens if you don't treat this acute thyroiditis it can develop all sort of complications like uh, you just focus on this picture this is your thyroid gland and this is trachea suppose your thyroid gland is inflamed as in acute thyroiditis it can enlarge and compress over your trachea producing tracheal obstruction this can track posteriorly producing a retropharyngeal abscess it can track downwards producing mediastinitis it can invade your bloodstream producing septicemia and at later phase it can cause thrombosis of your jugular vein, jugular venous thrombosis. So these are the complications expected in acute thyroiditis. Moving to decure veins thyroiditis or viral thyroiditis or granulomatous thyroiditis. These are the other terms. This is a subacute thyroiditis and usually presents with pain. So that, that's why it is called as a painful thyroiditis. It is more common in females of the age group 30 to 50 years. And pathology, you can remember these two points. Whenever there is a decurvine thyroiditis, there will be disruption of the thyroid follicles with release of the stored thyroid hormone into the circulation. The second thing is multinucleate giant cell accumulation, which ultimately lead to 
a granuloma formation. So, what will be the clinical features you come across in case of decurvens thyroiditis? As I already told, there will be a disruption of the thyroid follicles. So, that is called a destructive phase. So, all stored thyroid hormones are released into the circulation. So, there will be increased T3 and T4 levels. This will lead to symptoms suggestive of hyperthyroidism. Once all these stored hormones are depleted, in the second phase, they will go into a hypothyroid phase. So, they will present with symptoms suggestive of hypothyroidism. And eventually, the gland will recover and patient will become euthyroid. How will you investigate decurvens thyroiditis? Initially, you can go for routine investigations like to total count, differential count, ESR. All those will be elevated in decurvens thyroiditis. Along with that, there will be elevated thyroglobulin levels. Why? Because there is a disruption of the thyroid follicle with the release of stored thyroglobulin into the circulation. So, what happens to thyroid function test? As I already told, there is a destructive phase. So, the, in that phase, there will be increased T3 and T4. So, that will mimic hyperthyroidism. In the second phase, there will be depletion of the thyroid hormones. So, that will mimic hypothyroidism and followed by the recovery which will be a euthyroid status. That is how your TFT varies. And what about radioactive iodine uptake or technetium scans? Because these thyroid follicles are disrupted, it cannot no longer take up these thyroid hormones. So, the radioactive iodine uptake will be reduced in thyroiditis. And autoimmune antibodies like a anti-thyroid peroxidase antibody. This is a viral inflammation. It has nothing to do with autoimmunity. So, this under antibodies will be negative. So, this is just to show the different phases of decurvens thyroiditis. Initially, due to the release of thyroid hormone, there will be a thyrotoxic phase. Your T3 and T4 will be high. This is followed by a depletion of the hormones. Your T3 and T4 levels will be low. So, that is a hypothyroid phase followed by recovery of the gland and the patient becomes euthyroid. On this side, what is shown here is a reduced radioactive iodine uptake. The gland is not seen actually. So, how will you treat decurvens thyroiditis? You can divide the treatment into symptomatic management and treatment of thyroid hormone levels. So, basic problem is thyroid pain. So, how will you treat thyroid pain? You can always start with NSAIDs. If the patient is not improving with NSAID, you can consider oral prednisolone, the steroids. Okay, that is for thyroid pain. The second one is destructive phase or hyperthyroid phase. Your patient is thyrotoxic, you want to control the symptoms of thyroid toxicity or you can always start a beta blocker. What is the role of antithyroid drugs? As I already told, this is a transient phase. So, antithyroid drugs has no role in the treatment of decurvens thyroiditis. And the last second phase or hypothyroid phase, you can always supplement levothyroxine but low dose. You need not give high dose, you just supplement with a low dose levothyroxine uh, but do a close follow up. Eventually, your patient will recover and the patient will become euthyroid. You can stop this levothyroxine. So, that is all about decurvens thyroiditis. Now, we will see what is silent thyroiditis. So, the silent thyroiditis is also a form of subacute thyroiditis. This usually happens in postpartum females who has anti-thyroid, anti-TPO antibody positivity in the antipartum period. They develop a sort of thyroiditis which is painless and the clinical features are almost similar to decurvens thyroiditis. They have got a thyrotoxic phase followed by a hypothyroid phase and eventually they will become euthyroid. But the problem is this can recur in subsequent pregnancies and finally your patient can go into overt hypothyroidism. Overt hypo. Okay. So, treatment in this thyrotoxic phase you can treat with beta blockers to control the symptoms. In hypothyroid phase, you can give levothyroxine at a low dose supplementation. For, do a close follow up. Once the patient is euthyroid, you can actually stop medications. So, that is thyroid thyroiditis. Now, coming to Hashimoto's thyroiditis or the most common cause of thyroiditis. This is a chronic autoimmune thyroiditis which is more common in females. 4 is to, four, four is to 1 is the ratio. And the pathology, pathology it is just lymphocytic infiltration of your thyroid gland followed by thyroid follicular atrophy and finally leading to fibrosis of the gland. So, clinical features, since this is a painless thyroiditis, most of the time you will be noticing a 
goiter which is firm rubbery in consistency or they can present with symptoms suggestive of hypothyroidism once they develop LO T3 or T4. The, remember this has got a tendency to progress into B cell lymphomas. So how will you investigate Hashimoto's thyroiditis? You can do a TFT. This is a most common cause of hypothyroidism. I already told. So your TSH values will be elevated and T4 values will be low. Since this is a chronic autoimmune thyroiditis, your anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies will be positive. And you can always proceed with a USG thyroid to look for other structural abnormalities like multinodular goiter or a uh, solitary adenoma, all those things. And the treatment, since this can progress to an overt hypothyroidism, the treatment is thyroxine supplementation. And the drug used is levothyroxine and the maximum or usual dose is 1.6 microgram per kilogram per day morning single dose. Okay. Now coming to the last one or Riddell's thyroiditis. Riddell's thyroiditis usually happens in middle-aged females. This is just a hard non-tender thyroid swelling mimicking malignancy but clinically this is euthyroid. Since this is a hard uh, non-tender swelling it can produce obstructive symptoms so the treatment is surgery or even you can try tamoxifen. So with that we will go back to the case scenario. Our patient a 30 year old lady came to OPD with a fever, a tender thyroid swelling with high total count and high ESR. Most likely this patient is having a subacute thyroiditis. Her TSH level is low. So she is in a she is in a destructive phase or thyrotoxic phase of subacute thyroiditis. How will you proceed further? The chance of this being a Hashimoto thyroiditis is very less because very rarely the Hashimoto thyroiditis can present as a painful thyroiditis. Still, you can go for an anti-thyroid peroxidase antibody to rule out autoimmune pathology. Now, few MCQs from this. What is the most common cause of thyroiditis? I already mentioned the most common cause of thyroiditis is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Second one. Patients with Hashimoto thyroids are at the risk of developing, they are at the risk of developing B cell lymphomas. And the last one, all are true about decurvans thyroiditis except decurvans thyroiditis is not a autoimmune thyroiditis, it is of viral etiology and the common viruses suspected are Coxsackie virus, Mumps virus and Adenovirus. Okay. Dokumentary.